Hi, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to continue our look at OwnCloud, and we're going to look specifically this week at how to add contacts and calendar service to OwnCloud. Now we've been doing a series on OwnCloud for the Mac, and so I've done a series of screencasts that have shown you how to set up OwnCloud and get to this place. You may want to go back and take a look at those before you do this, uh, because we've walked through the entire setup from start to the place that we're at right now. Now I'm doing this as a part of giving you some options on how you can replace macOS Server as Apple is going through the process of deprecating various services and so contacts and calendar service is something that won't be available but it is something that you can add to your own cloud instance so I want to show you what that looks like. So if we come in here and go over to the uh, hamburger icon over here and you can see we've got market we want to go ahead and click on that and what it's going to do is load the market for us. And you'll notice on the market we have various categories here. We're just going to click on productivity because uh, that's just going to sort uh, the various plugins that we've got. And you notice right here on the top we've got a contacts and calendar plugin. Uh, there's a number of other plugins here as well for productivity, even one for tasks and bookmarks if you wanted to do that as well. But let's go ahead and start with contacts. I'm just going to load that up here and we're going to go ahead and install it. And you can see that it's loading and it'll go through the process of actually installing this plugin for me. You know, there we go. You can see that the uh, app contacts has been installed successfully. Uh, so it's gone through its process of doing that so that we know that this particular plugin is installed. Uh, what we can do is just go back to productivity again and we'll click on calendar. And this is the calendar plugin. And we're just going to go ahead and install this one as well. And you can see that it's loading there for us so that we can have both of these plugins as a part of our own cloud instance. And so, you know, it just depends on your instance. You can see there it has been uh, installed successfully. One thing you will notice is notice we've got some updates right here. If I just click on updates, it will show you uh, any of the apps that have been updated. And you can see every single one of these has been updated to a different version. Uh, you can come in here and just click on update to update any of these at any time. Just wanted to show you that that was in here so that you knew that that's there. Okay, now to gain access to those plugins that I just installed, if I just come up to the hamburger icon, you notice that now I've got this contacts and calendar added up here. Before it was just files and market, now I've got these two plugins. So if I just click on contacts, for instance, it's going to take us into the contacts plugin. And so here it is, we're all set and ready to go. You notice that it has groupings of all contacts or not grouped. And you can see here that there are no contacts in here because I haven't added them. So let's go ahead and add a contact just so you get an idea for how this works. So if I click click on new contact here you notice that I get this new contact field and I could start putting in a name so let's just go ahead and put in let's say John Doe and let's just put him in there you can see that I do have the option to put in an organization name if I wanted to and a title and let's let's just say uh, let's just say he's a part of own cloud and if we come in here and title, we can just say boss. Let's just put something like that. Now I can go through and put in information on his phone number, and I can choose the type of phone number it is. Let's just say work here, and I'll go ahead and put in a number. We're just going to put 999-9, let's see, 999-9999. Okay, there's his phone number, so we've got that added. I can also add email. I can choose home or work, and so... We'll put uh, doe at uh, owncloud.com just to make that up. And then I can choose a group to put them in too because I can group my contacts. I can put them as, uh, let's just say, business. And you can see that's going to be a new group. And so we'll go ahead and put that in there. So now there's a business group. And you can see that that group has been added on the side over here. Now I can choose his address. I can put work, home, or other. If I put work... I'll just put 999, uh, and then we'll say, that's if it's a post office box. We'll go ahead and say that. We'll put 92999, and we'll just put anywhere, and we'll put uh, CA, and we'll put USA. And then I can add whatever fields I want. And you can see here I can add an address, an anniversary, birthday, uh, date of death even, detailed name, email, all these, all this information in here, website, social network, I can add whatever I want in here. So I can add those fields and customize it however I'd like. Uh, I can also download the card from here and I can delete it up here as well. So we're going to go ahead and just leave that as, uh, as our card there. I can also upload a photo and then we'll go over here and you can see not grouped. I don't have any. If I go into business, there's my one contact. And so now I've got that set and ready to go. So that's just kind of a basic tour of how the contacts work. So you can see that you can actually put all of your contacts in here. 
Okay, now that we've taken a look at contacts, let's go ahead and take a look at the calendars. If I just come up here to the hamburger icon, you can see I've got calendar right here. If I just click into the calendar, it's going to load uh, the calendar plugin. Now what you can see is we've got all of the functionality of a calendar, and let me just go ahead and close this right here, where we can look at things by day, so I can look at what's happening in the day, I can look at week, and I can look at month, and you can see I get all that information in there. The yellow highlights the actual day that I'm on right here, and right here you can see the different calendars that I have. So this is my personal calendar. I can add another calendar if I want to do that, and you can see I can put a name here, and let's just say business on that calendar. And so I hit business, and so now I've got a business calendar right here. Now at any time, if you notice, I've got this uh, share icon. I can share uh, my calendar if I want to do that, and you can see I can uh, share with certain users or groups, or I can share a link. And so then this becomes public access right here. And so what I can do is off of this, if I just click on this, I can email the link to somebody just by clicking on that. Or right here, I can click on that shared calendar and it will just show me the business shared calendar. And you can see it, it shows who I'm sharing it with and it's got all that information on it. So it just opens a new calendar window. Uh, over here you can see I can subscribe or I can even download the calendar if I want to do that so that I can add it to my local desktop. Let me just come back in here. So there are a lot of different share options there. If I just click on these ellipses right here where it says more, uh, I can edit, link, download, or delete a particular calendar if I want to do that. So I just wanted to show you some of those options there. I can also uh, add a subscription to a particular calendar right here. Uh, just by hitting this, I can add the subscription and put in the uh, iCal link that I want to put in there and create it if I wanted to add a subscription. Here I've got contact birthdays. That's a particular calendar that I'm already subscribed to. So all of my contacts and my contact list will show their birthdays here. And if I just click on these ellipses again, I can link, download, or delete. Now if I wanted to go more in depth, I can go to the settings and import right here. And I can skip uh, event simple event editor. I can show the week numbers uh, or not. You can see there, it showed me the number of weeks. You can see how that shows up there or not. I can import a calendar from here, uh, or I can, I can see the primary uh, CalDAV server address or the iOS CalDAV server address. And so if I just uh, want to copy that, I can copy those links and put them into, let's say, my iPhone or iOS device, and it'll automatically pull this calendar information. So that is a nice uh, option there. If I just click on the settings, it goes away again and drops down below. Now I can add events uh, just like I would in any other calendar. If I just come in here and click, you see I've got a new event. I can put the title of the event, let's just say Lunch with Joe, and then I can choose what calendar it goes on. Let's say it's on business. I have the start date, the end date. I can choose whether it's an all-day event or not. I even have more. If I click on more, you'll see that I get this pullout over here that gives me more information. I can do things like the location or description. I have attendees, so I can add different attendees to the event with their email addresses. I have reminders here. If I want to add a reminder, I can do that. And it'll give me an alarm on when it starts, and I can add that. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and close that out. And I can set up repeating events right here as well just by going into this uh, area up here. If I just come back to details, you can see here I've got confirmed, uh, and I can see whether it's tentative, canceled, whatever. So I can set the actual uh, what happens with this particular meeting. And then when, uh, when shared, show full event, or I can change that to, uh, you know, just to show uh, the show only, and then uh, show only busy, or show... Uh, or, or when shared, hide the event so that I don't have the event there. So again, there's a lot of different uh, features that's built into the calendaring application here. And if I just say create, you can see that it's going to then create that event for me. And there it is, Lunch with Joe. Now if I just click on it, you can see it'll give me more details on the event and I can come in here and edit or update the event or even delete it uh, right from here as well. I'm just going to click off of that. And again, it'll let me start a new event. So that gives you an idea of how the contacts and calendars plugins work in OwnCloud. Again, it's got a, a pretty, uh, you know, robust setup for the calendars and contacts, very similar to what you might see with uh, what we had in Mac OS Server, but you can do it now through OwnCloud to replace it. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac. If you're interested in help in setting up your own server, feel free to contact me at todd at toddoltoff.com.